Hello and welcome back to CS615 System Administration. This is week 6, segment 3, and we're beginning a series of bite-sized videos covering some of the more common protocols you regularly encounter as a system administrator across the standard TCP IP stack. While some of this may be familiar to you from other classes, I hope that you will find at least something useful in each segment. In this video, we'll discuss the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, and its IPv6 equivalent, the Neighbor Discovery Protocol, or NDP. We already saw ARP in our last video, but especially the comparison to the IPv6 NDP should help illustrate a few important concepts. Let's first look at the ARP cache of a few systems. On our typical EC2 instance, it'll look something like this. But since our instance resides on a dedicated VPC, and we don't have any other systems spun up there, there's not going to be a whole lot of local traffic on this network. So let's see what things look like on our Stevens Linux lab systems. Okay, this is perhaps a bit more interesting, as we can see numerous systems on our network. But to illustrate the use of the R protocol, we need to be able to flush the cache and capture packets, for which we need super user privileges. So let me show you some real-world traffic from my personal virtual server. All right. Not particularly exciting, only a few entries here, but at least now we can start our analysis. We run a TCP dump, capturing all ARP traffic. Then flush the ARP cache. Next, we generate some IPv4 network traffic. ICMP echo request echo reply, also known as ping in this case. And then display the ARP cache. We can now stop the TCP dump again and take a look at what traffic we captured. Oh, wow, look at that. That's a lot of packets we saw here. If you run this through WC, you'd see we had almost 6,000 packets here. Now, obviously not all of these were from our system, so let's take a look. We see a whole bunch of who has requests, showing that those requests made by other systems are broadcast to all devices in the broadcast domain. Down here, we see 166.84.5.240 asking for our IP address, 166.84.799. And the is at reply is what we are then sending unicast to that address. We see a whole lot of other who has requests, with the only is at replies being our answers to other hosts asking where we are. Although every now and then we also oversee other is at messages without a who has request. This is known as a gratuitous ARP, a reply that nobody asked for. This commonly happens when a new interface comes up to let the switch know where this device is. OK, so to recap and visualize once more, we saw requests from other systems asking, who has this IP address? Please let me know. Such requests are sent by the sending system with the destination MAC address of all ones, or FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
which utilizes ICMP. So let's try another TCP dump, this time collecting ICMPv6 traffic. We flush our neighbor discovery table and send out a few IPv6 packets to trigger the neighbor discovery from our end. After this, we can look at our NDP table and find this entry over here. Ok, so let's take a look at the network packets we captured. Oof, like before, that's a lot, almost a thousand packets. Let's look again at our IP addresses. And what's our default IPv6 route? There. This link local address and our global scope address is this one over here. Let's see if that shows up in our TCP dump. There. So we see an ICMPv6 neighbor solicitation from our global address to this FFO2 colon colon 1 address here, asking who has the address of our default route. Note that the low order 24 bits of the address we're looking for is combined with the FFO2 colon colon 1 colon FF prefix, in that the default route replies to our global address. To do that, we then see the default route ask, hey, who has this global address that I'm supposed to reply to? To which we reply from our link local address down here. Now, Let's look at our NDP cache. Two entries. If we send an ICMP echo request to this special address here, FFO2 colon colon 1, then look at that. We get a lot of replies back. And our NDP cache now has a lot more entries. This is because this address, FFO2 colon colon 1, is the all nodes multicast address, and we thus requested a reply from all IPs in that multicast address. Let's compare and visualize like we did before. Here's our setup, just like before with the various IPv6 addresses. Note that each system has both a link local address as well as a global address. If we want to find out what the MAC address is of a given IPv6 address, then we issue a neighbor solicitation to the so-called solicited node multicast address. This address is determined by combining the FFO2 colon colon 1 colon FF prefix with the low order 24 bits of the desired destination address. Any system with an IPv6 address matching those low order bits joins that specific multicast address and our request is then multicast to only those addresses, unlike in the case of ARP, where these requests were broadcast to all systems in the broadcast domain. The reply, the neighbor advertisement, then is returned as a unicast target is message. But of course, we can send messages to all systems via the all nodes multicast address which is linked local in scope, and which then gets delivered to all systems in that linked local broadcast domain, similar to the ARP requests we saw for IPv4. Alright, time to recap. We saw the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, defined in RFC 826 and used for IPv4. We saw the who has request going out as a broadcast, and the is that replies being unicast, unless broadcast as gratuitous announcements. For IPv6, we saw the neighbor discovery protocol, where we saw different address scopes in play. The neighbor solicitation, who has, went to the special solicited node multicast address, 
while the neighbor advertisement, target is, went to the global unicast address that made the request. But like gratuitous ARP announcements, we can also generate similar unsolicited neighbor advertisements, which is simulated via a ping packet sent to the all nodes multicast address. Now, it's worth noting that in IPv6, the neighbor discovery protocol happens inside of the network layer using ICMPv6. We'll take a closer look at what else happens with ICMP in our next video. Make sure to play around with TCP dump and capture packets on your own systems. We'll be using TCP dump more and more in the next few videos. Until then, thanks for watching. Cheers!